Hey guys, it's Phase One. In this video, we're going to cover some of the upcoming gameplay features that will drastically impact the gameplay experience in Star Citizen. If you're new to this channel, we do all kinds of Star Citizen content, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss out on new videos. I also stream on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So if you have any questions or if you just like to hang out, you can leave me a follow there as well. My links are down below. Just to let you know, we're still doing a giveaway for the new Tumbro tank. If you'd like to participate, you can find the link in the description below. And without any further ado, let's get started. In the near future, we can expect a new way to explore in Star Citizen. This system is called Long Distance Probing. I believe this mechanic will be deep and allow for a rich experience for the player base. Why I'm excited for this feature is that it will be similar in many ways to the exploration mechanic in EVE Online. Before we dive into long distance probing, we need to understand the difference between probing and scanning. Scanning involves using a radar system, which is limited to a 50 kilometer radius to detect objects as opposed to probing which involves astronomical distances, allowing a player to probe down sections of a given solar system. As an explorer, you'll need to have all the necessary modules installed on your ship in order to probe the current star system. In our vehicle manager app, we will have more options to customize our ships like probe types, scanners, etc. In EVE Online, before heading out, you need to have equipped the necessary equipment and skill before heading out into space to explore. For example, a player will need to assess what they're looking for and the level of accuracy. With that understanding, they will then decide on whether they need a long range broad scanning probe or a short range precision probe. Also, the player will need to take into account the fact that each probe type has a finite amount of fuel. In EVE Online, to explore an anomaly or an interesting signature, you'll need to launch probes whilst in space and employ a triangulation method in order to obtain an accurate reading of the actual location and its signatures. What's most interesting is the fact that the success of an explorer is completely dependent on the skill of that player. This means players or orgs will actively seek for real people with high skill levels in exploration to be a part of their fleet in order to find the best points of interest in space. Detectable objects could be mining fields, derelicts, ships, etc. Similar to EVE Online, once players manage to get the appropriate probe results, with that information, he or she would then have the option to jump to the location to further investigate, or to store and sell the coordinates, or to keep it for a later expedition. You can also analyze the signatures on your ship in order to get a better picture of what it could be in comparison to your previous probe results. The probing gameplay will work in conjunction with the stealth mechanic as a result of what looks like a small ship could actually be a large ship or a fleet of ships with their components turned off in order to attract players. Thus, this mechanic will affect all players in Star Citizen as a pirate will be looking for players to hunt while explorers are looking for derelicts to loot or even orgs will have dedicated scouts that are responsible for probing pirate traps along trade routes. This will create a synergetic ecosystem of lawful and unlawful activity in Star Citizen. In the future, they want players to be able to take physical items off of players as well as crates and containers throughout the world. When generating loot in the Star System, lootable items will be congruent with the location they are found at. For example, medical items at a medical outpost. This will be implemented via a tag system which dictates the type of loot each item is. Looting in general will fall under two types. Legal, which involves finding items which do not belong to anyone, and illegal, which involves stealing items from a private location. In regards to NPCs, you can loot items they physically have equipped, but in their backpacks and pockets, 
loot will be generated randomly. Once implemented, we can expect ship refining to be significantly different from station refining. Ship refining will be an active process as players will be required to constantly engage in adjusting systems, pressures, temperatures, timers, levers, and processes to get the best result while preventing the destruction of refining equipment such as the reactors or the furnaces for example. The player will need to actively make decisions on materials that come in. An example of this is if you have a furnace installed on your refinery and you receive minerals and metals, the furnace will destroy the minerals while it refines the metals. So the player will need to make these decisions on the fly to maximize profits and yield. Refining gameplay will work in line with the mining mechanic in such a way that players will no longer need to only go to stations to refine. Refining ships can act as a hub of an entire mining operation. Multiple mining vessels can continuously mine and drop off ore on the refining ship. The refining ship will then be responsible for refining the material and to get the highest yield. Once processed, haulers can come in to pick up the refined ore head out and sell or to drop off at a cargo facility. To protect this operation, players will eventually need fighters to secure the entire operation as pirates may notice a chain and attempt to intercept the miners, the refiners, or even the haulers. The refining ship will be fully customizable as you can tailor the reactor to process minerals or metals. Thus, the owner of the refining ship can dictate what kind of material he expects from the miners. The Starfare is not only meant to refill but to refine as well. The players will eventually have the option to customize it in such a way that you can decide on how many tanks are dedicated for storing liquids, gas, or fuel, but also how many reactors to have installed on the ship. To start fair refueling, the player will need to dock with the Starfarer's boom arm, similar to how aircrafts refuel today. Once docked, then refueling will begin. This docking mechanic will be similar to the Merling and Connie. This will allow both the Starfarer and the ship being refueled to move slowly mid-flight. Let me know in the comments below which feature you look forward to the most. If there's anything in this video that you like, make sure to leave a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more. I will see you on the next one.